أدعو إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضاه Before we begin today's class we're going to quickly go over what we took in our last class and this is what we're going to be doing at the start of each lesson we're going to quickly review what we've taken in the previous class and the focus is going to be on memorizing the words and this is the most important part of learning a new language memorizing vocab and being able to use these vocabs in the right context طيب so i'm going to ask you questions regarding what we took last lesson how do you say a house baker okay how do you say a chair cuisine how do you say a pen alamo how do you say a book kitabun how do you say a notebook daftarun how do you say a mosque masjidun how do you say a bed sagirun how do you say a key How do you say a door? Babun. So this is the words. Okay, now we're going to make sentences. How do you say this is a door? How do you say this is a chair? How do you say this is a key? Okay. How do you say how do you say in Arabic? How do you say How do you say in Arabic? I'm going to teach you that now. You need to memorize, yeah? I'm going to ask you in Arabic from now on. Kayfa taqulu? Kayfa taqulu means how do you say? Kayfa taqulu, okay? What does kayfa taqulu mean? How do you say? That's if I'm talking to a boy, a masculine, a male. If I'm asking a male, I say kayfa taqulu. If I'm talking to a woman, a girl, a female, I say كيف تقولين Okay So I'm going to stop saying how do you say how do you say When I speak to you I'm going to say كيف تقول What does كيف تقول mean How do you say Okay let's try كيف تقول This is a house هذا بيت كيف تقولين This is a key هذا مفتاح كيف تقولين This is a door هذا باب كيف تقول this is a pen هذا قلم كيف تقولين this is a mosque هذا مسجد very good okay so هذا is when you're pointing something out the thing you're pointing out has to be masculine singular close masculine singular close can i say هذا Sumeya, if I'm talking about Sumeya, can I say Hada Sumeya? This is Sumeya. No. Why? You only say Hada to anything that's masculine. Yeah, something that's masculine. The object has to be masculine or the person has to be masculine. Sumeya is a girl. I can't say Hada Sumeya. Tamam. So this is a very important lesson, yeah? So we need to know how to use Hada. We know what it means. It's to point things out. It means this in English. But when you use it, you use it for things that are close, things that are masculine, and things which are singular. One thing, not more than one. Okay, this is what I need everyone to do. I need everyone to make space at the back of their notebooks for the new words that they learn during each lesson. So these are the new words that we took from last lesson. So there's a section here for Al-Kalima. Al-Kalima means the word. What's the new word that you have taken? You list it down here. So I've written it down here. Al-Kalima. Al-Kalima is the new word. At-Tarjamatu. At-Tarjamatu is the translation of this new word. Al-Jins is the gender of this word. Because we mentioned previously that every noun, and these are going to be nouns, has a gender. Yeah, every noun has a gender. Mithal is an example of this word in a sentence. Al-jam' is the plural of this word. What's the plural of this word? 
we're not going to fill in every section inshallah we're going to come back to the sections that are unfilled and we fill it in once we've um studied a bit more so there's a section in the book where we study jam plurals of the words in this book so once we study that we're going to fill in the sections inshallah and the ones that are not given we're going to do them ourselves we're going to create example sentences with the new words and uh, inshallah we're going to translate them so these are the new words that we've taken kalimatun is not a word that was in the book it's a it's, it's part of the introduction that we took the introduction that we took we said kalima is a word and words in the arabic language are divided into three ismun ismun fi'lun harfun so these are the some of the new words that we took in arabic so i wrote them down the word kalima means a word and this noun is feminine so I can't say هذا كلمة. I can't say that because this is feminine and هذا is used to point out things which are masculine. So I can't say هذا كلمة. This is a word. I have to use a different demonstrative pronoun which we're going to use later or we're going to learn later. Ismun is a noun. Ismun, the, this word is masculine. So F stands for feminine and M stands for masculine. فعلون, then we have uh, Fi'lun is a verb, it's masculine. Harfun, a particle, masculine. Ad-darsu, the lesson, is masculine. Ad-darsu, al-awwalu, the first. Ad-darsu, the lesson, al-awwalu, the first. Both of them are masculine. Hada is the ismul ishara, which means this, it's masculine. Baytun, a house. Masjidun, a mosque. Babun, a door. Kitabun, a book. Daftarun was not part of the words mentioned in the lesson. This was something that we added on. A notebook. So we're not just we're not just trying to concentrate on the words that are given in the book. Otherwise, if we just focus on memorizing the words in the book, we're not going to have a rich vocab. We need to add and pick up as much vocab as we can, whether they're in the book or outside of the book. Daftarun, a notebook. And the difference between kitab and daftar is obvious. Notebook is something that you write in. A book is usually something that you read. Qalamun, a pen. Miftahun, a key. Maktabun, a desk. Sarirun, a bed. Kursiyun, a chair. So these are the words. Once you get into the system of being able to organize it like this, you don't really need to put in lines. You can do it like this. So this is a continuation of some of the words that we took. Mufradun means singular. Muthanna, jewel. Jam'un, plural. Muthakkarun, masculine. Mu'annathun, feminine. Jinsun, gender. Adadun, number. Qaribun, close or near. Al-ishara, sign or indication or pointing. So the last word has F next to it. F indicates that it's feminine. Al-ishara is feminine and everything else except for Mu'annath is feminine. And everything else is masculine. So you could do it like this without having to draw lines. طيب. So the point is, firstly, when you come across a new word, the first thing you need to do is be able to pronounce it. What's the first thing that you need to be able to do? Pronounce, pronounce the word clearly and correctly. Because if you pronounce it incorrectly, it's going to affect the way you write it. It's going to affect... Uh, everything else so the first step is pronouncing the word correctly and we're going to concentrate inshallah with our reading to make sure that we pronounce every uh, word in this book correctly tamam so pronouncing the word correctly after that being able to write the word correctly after that memorizing the meaning yeah as well as the word memorizing the word as well as its meaning knowing its gender the example sentence and the jump will come afters, afterwards. So in total, there's six things. Being able to pronounce the word correctly, being able to write the word correctly, knowing its meaning, its gender, its plural, and sixthly, an example sentence using that word. This is something that a person learning the Arabic language should have a section in his notebook for. And he should apply these six things with every new word that he comes across. Tamam. So these are the new words, inshallah. I'll take a picture and I'll post it in the Telegram group so that it's easier for everyone to copy, inshallah. Tayyib, so we're going to start today's class. Okay, in today's class, we're going to be learning how to ask questions. 
how to ask questions. And as you have already learnt in our previous course, the basics of Arabic reading and writing, we read from right to left. And we also write from right to left. Yeah, in Arabic we read and write from right to left. So this is why the question mark is facing this way. Yeah, the question mark is facing this way. Hadha, we already know. What does Hadha mean? This. Okay, so now it's turned into a question by the addition, with the addition of ma. What does ma mean? Means what? What does ma mean? What? What does ma mean? What? So ma hadha means what is this? What does ma hadha mean? What is this? طيب. Ma hadha means what is this? Ma hadha, what is this? Okay, repeat after me. Yeah? We're going to say it five times. Ma hadha. ما هذا 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 what does that mean what is this what is this what is this okay next line we look at the picture the picture shows us a house so the answer is to this question what is this هذا بيت هذا بيت هذا بيت We already know how to say هذا بيت, right? So we don't need to repeat it five times. What does هذا بيت mean? This is a house. Very good. Okay, another way of asking a question. And if you look at this line and the line above it, the only difference is the Hamza. The addition of this Hamza at the start has turned this statement into a question. So we can turn statements into questions by adding a Hamza at the beginning. So this is another tool which is used to ask questions. So, so far we've learnt ma, what, and hamza. Hamza is translated according to the sentence. So, ahadha baytun, is this a house? Aha ulai muslimun, are these people Muslims? So it doesn't have like a direct translation, it's translated according to the sentence. Yeah? It can mean is or are and so on. Ahada Baytun 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 What does that mean? Is this a house? Is this what does that mean? Is this a house? Okay, what's the difference between Hada Baytun and Ahada Baytun? What's the difference? One is a statement and the other one is a question. question. One you're telling someone, Hada Baytun, this is a house. The other one you're asking them, Ahada Baytun. What made it turn into a question? The Hamza. The Hamza, the Hamza at the beginning turned the statement into a, a question. question. Okay, let me give another example. I'll say to you, Ana Muhammad. What does Ana Muhammad mean? I am Muhammad. I am Muhammad. That's a statement now. I'm telling you, I am Muhammad. I want to turn this statement into a question. What do I need to do? Bring Hamza at the beginning. So I say, A Ana Muhammad. What does A Ana Muhammad mean? Am I Muhammad? Am I Muhammad? I'm asking now. Okay. أَأَنَا Muhammad. Am I Muhammad? طيب. So we've learnt two tools to ask questions. What is ma? And is or are? And so on is Hamza. Okay. Now look at the answer. When we ask the question with ma hadha, we answer directly. Ma hadha, what is this? We say, what it is is. Hadha baytun. If this was a masjid, we say, ma hadha, hadha masjidun, and so on. So if you ask the question, if you ask a question with ma, you answer directly. But if you answer a question, if you, if you ask a question with hamza, if you ask a question with hamza, because the person who's asking a question with hamza, he has an idea what it is, but he wants you to confirm. He wants you to co confirm that what he thinks in his mind is right or not. 
So this is why you need to answer with na'am. You either answer with na'am to confirm what this person thinks it is. So here he's saying, ahadha baytun, is this a house? He thinks it's a house. If it is a house, you confirm by saying na'am. What does na'am mean? Yes. 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 What does na'am mean? Yes. Okay, what if what he is saying is wrong and it's not what he thinks it is? You say la. La, la which is here at the bottom. You say la. So when you answer a question that is uh, built up with the hamza, that starts with the hamza, ahadha baytun, you always have to start with na'am or la. What does la mean? No. No. What does na'am mean? Yes. 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 What does na'am mean? Yes. What does la mean? No. When do you use na'am and la? When you ask a question with Hamza. Ahadha baytun a'ana Muhammad na'am o la? Na'am o la? Okay. But if you ask a question with ma, do you need to bring na'am o la? No. No. Okay. Let's carry on. Ahadha baytun is this a house? Na'am. Hadha baytun. Na'am. Hadha baytun. I want you to repeat after me, yeah? Naam hadha baytun. 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 So this is naam is a new word. What does naam mean? Yes. Yes. What does la mean? No. No. Okay. Next one. Ma hadha. Repeat. Ma hadha. Ma hadha. Ma hadha. What does ma hadha mean? Who can tell me? What is this? Yes, what is this? Very good. We already said it five times here. So we don't need to repeat it five times again. Mahada means what is what? this? What is this? What does Mahada mean? What, what is this? What does Ma mean? What? Okay. Next one. Or well, the answer to Mahada, do we need to say Naam Ola? No. No, we don't need to say Naam Ola. When do we say Naam Ola? If we ask the question with Ahada, with the Hamza. Okay. Here we don't need to say na'am or la because the person doesn't know what it is. Whereas this person who asks the Hamza, he has an idea what it is. He just wants you to confirm or negate. Okay, here he doesn't have a, a clue what it is. So that's why he's asking. What is this? This is a new word now. Hada qamisun. Hada qamisun. Hada qamisun. Hada qamisun. Hada qamisun. هذا قميص 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 new word is قميص what's قميص shirt قميص تمام next question أهذا سرير is this a What's a sarir? Bed. bed. Yeah. Ahada sarirun. Is this a bed? Is this a bed? La. No, this is not a bed. And the question is asked with using uh, using a hamza. So the answer is either going to start with yeah. na'am or la. la. Na'am or la. In this case, we say la because this is not a bed. What is this? Hada kursiyun. Tayyib. Ahada sarirun. Ahada sarirun is this a bed? La hada kursiyun. No, this is a chair. Next question. Ahada miftahun is this a key? Key. Is this a key? No. La. This is not a key. What is this? Ma hada? Hada qalamun. This is a pen. أهذا مفتاح لا هذا قلم أهذا مفتاح لا هذا قلم أهذا مفتاح لا هذا قلم is this a key no this is a pen and the last question on the on the on the page ما هذا what does ما هذا mean what is this? Very good. What does ma hadha mean? What is this? The answer? Hadha najmun. 
هذا نجم نجم is a star what's a نجم so this is a new word let's say it five times هذا نجم 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 what does نجم mean نجم okay not مجم نا نجم what's نجم star star very good so let me read this page one more time quickly. Ma hada, what is this? Ma hada, what is this? Hada baytun, this is a house. A hada baytun, is this a house? Naam, hada baytun, yes, this is a house. Ma hada, what is this? Hada qamisun, this is a shirt. أهذا سرير؟ لا هذا كرسي. Is this a bed? No, this is a chair. أهذا مفتاح؟ Is this a key? لا هذا قلم. This is a pen. ما هذا؟ What is this? هذا نجم. This is a star. Let's move on to the next page. On the next page, it says. Tam rinun. This is a ta on top, and it says mim ra ya nun. Tam rinun. Tam rinun means exercise. What does tam rin mean? Exercise. This is a new word. Yeah. Let's say it five times. Tam rinun. 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 What does tamreen mean? Exercise. What does tamreen mean? Exercise. Exercise. So this is the first exercise in this uh, lesson. In this lesson. Okay, so this is homework. Exercise. Uh, the exercise is asking the questions. Ma hadha, ma hadha, ma hadha, ma hadha, ma hadha, ma hadha, ma hadha. What does ma hadha mean? What, what is, is this? this? So the person who is asking this question doesn't know what it is. So you need to answer what it is. So you'd say, for example, هذا, and then you look at the picture. The picture here is a key. So مفتاح. So you write هذا مفتاح. هذا مفتاح. You need to write that down. And then you look at the pictures, and then you answer all of the questions according to the pictures that are on the on the page. This is the first exercise, and this is going to be homework. Okay. This is going to be homework. Tamri number one is homework. Then we have another homework. The second homework is Tamri number two. Tamri number two. Tamri number two is also asking questions. The difference between the first Tamri and the second Tamri is that the questions here have been asked using Hamza. Using Hamza, Hamza, Hamza. Ahada Najmun. So in this case, the person has an idea what it is. He wants you to confirm or negate if what he thinks it is is right or wrong. Whereas in the first one, ma hada, he has no clue. Ahada baytun, is this a house? Is this a key? Is this a shirt? Is this a star? You look at the picture, and as we mentioned, you need to either affirm or negate. How do you affirm? You say, yes. naam. Naam, yes. How do you negate? How do you say no? La. Yeah. So you look at the picture, for example, this one. Ahada baytun. Is this a house? La. Hada masjidun. Hada masjidun. And you answer all of those questions. And the final piece of homework, tamreen number three. Tamreen number three. It says, iqra waktub. This is going to come a lot of times in this book. Iqra. What does iqra mean? Read. Read. Iqra is a verb, it's a fi'lun. Iqra is a fi'lun. Then we have wa. This wow joins the two words together. Wow, this wa, wa means and. So read and uktub. What's uktub? Write. Uktub means write. But when we read the Hamzatul Wasl, in the, in the middle we skip it. So we're going to join the wow to the kaf. We say wak, 
واكتب اقرا واكتب repeat after me five times اقرا واكتب means read and write okay repeat after me five times اقرا واكتب 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 means read and write اقرا is a فعل and اكتب is a فعل reading and writing are actions طيب so the exercise here read and write wants to know whether you are able to pronounce this correctly and you are able to write it correctly by putting the correct uh, markings the tashkil the markers so you find that in this book when the author brings a new word he brings it with tashkil tashkil is basically this so if you look at the qamisun the qaf has a fatha mim has a kasra the ya has a sukun sad has dhammatain this is tashkil when the new word comes it comes with tashkil so to help you uh, read it correctly then as you go on through the book when this word comes again it comes without tashkil because the author expects you to know that the qaf should have a fatha the meme should have a kasra so you don't say qumu qumu or qama you need to know that it's qamisun and this answers the question that many people ask some people when they're learning arabic they say how do you read arabic when it has no tashkil how do you read this is how you read you memorize so the word comes you memorize it how it is Qamisun, once you know it's Qamisun, the Qaf is never going to change. It's going to have the Fatha. And the Meme is going to have the Kasra. The Ya is going to be Sakin. Same for Miftahun. It's never going to change. So once you memorize this word, you've memorized it. That's it. The Tashkil is done. Only thing that's going to change is the last Haraka on the last letter. Tayyip, so this exercise, Iqra Waktub, throughout this book, that's why it tests you. The fact that you've memorized this word and the, the fact that you're able to put place the Tashkil correctly. So this is the third exercise. You need to write these words out or these sentences out in your book and place the tashkil. I'm not going to read them because if I read them, I've given you the homework for this one. So this one is the third and final homework. The third and final homework. So we stop here, inshallah. And if there is any new words, the new words, you should be able to identify which words we've taken in this lesson which are new that we did not take previously and then you put it in your list on your notebook the list that we said you have to create you do the same thing with the new words in this lesson and inshallah insh next lesson we're going to start by going through these three pieces of homework before going on to the next part and continuing with uh, the new lesson Subhanakallahumma bihamdika, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka, atubu ilayk.